final great uh, Sunday of, of Great Holy Lent, because coming after this next week, we begin to change uh, and come close to Holy Week. So today we hear in our Gospel the Lord preparing His disciples. He prepared them for what was going to happen by telling them that He was going to die, that He was going to be betrayed, that He was going to be buried and crucified. But he finally ends with it by telling them, but I'll rise on the third day, by the way. So we have in our preparation, our own preparations, right? We're getting ready and preparing for Holy Week. And as we've led up to it the last few Sundays, we've been talking about the Holy Cross. We've been talking about the ladder of that cross, the ladder that leads to heaven. And this week we come to this special saint, St. Mary of Egypt. And she's given a special Sunday because of the significance of her repentance and how she changed. She's also uh, mentioned throughout the, um, uh, the compline of St. Andrew of Crete that we do it the first uh, week of, of, of Holy uh, Lent. And then also this last week we did a kind of a condensation of uh, all of St. Andrew of Crete's work and also read the life of St. Mary of Egypt. And her emphasis was this past Thursday. And it is about repentance. Repentance, that word that we hear so often in the church and never in the world. You never hear the word repentance on the news. You'll never hear the repent, you'll never see the word repentance in the newspaper or even on the radio. Because it, people don't know what it means. They don't use it. We don't talk about it, right? And in our language, perhaps the word is just not used. But what does the word repentance really mean? You've heard me say this before. Do any of you guys know what the word repentance means? You guys know what the word repentance means? How about you guys, you know? Some people know? Genevieve. Ah, very good. To change your ways, right? More specifically, it means to change your mind. It means to change the way you think about things. And then the way you act on those things, right? So, do you understand what repentance means now? So when we say the word repentance, we mean we're talking about changing the way we think. Changing the way we view the world, right? Many of the great saints of the church had, a, had an orthodox worldview. So they saw the world through an orthodox lens. And that lens is the lens of repentance, which is the lens of changing your mind away from the world and toward God. This is the meaning of repentance. So we talk about St. Mary of Egypt. And the reason why we talk about St. Mary of Egypt is because she is the quintessential example of repentance, right? Of changing your ways. So what is the story of St. Mary? Well, she was from Alexandria. She uh, was grown up in her early life, I'm guessing probably a Christian. The fathers don't really say this, but it was a Christian community and a Christian society and that she was perhaps baptized even as a child. It does not indicate in her story that she was baptized and chrismated and became a Christian, but that she was already a Christian, but had fallen away from the faith because she was seeking after her own pleasures all the time. That was her life. She wanted to seek after pleasure as much as she could and always have pleasure, and she didn't care how she got it. She just wanted to have it. Well, the problem with always seeking pleasure all the time is that you get yourself in trouble, right? You get yourself in trouble by always seeking pleasure because you don't look out for the other person. You're always seeking your own selfishness and not your own, uh, your, your neighbor's desires. And unfortunately for St. Mary, she led many people down the wrong path. St. Mary was uh, a sinner in a quintessential way as well, okay? But, even though she was a sinner, 
God changed her. She was willing, but God did the work in her heart. So the story of St. Mary of Egypt is that she was a terrible woman who did awful bad things all the time, very sexual things. She decided one day that she wanted to go to Jerusalem because a bunch of people were going, and so she got on a boat and she went there, and she was being bad the whole way there, and when she got there, she went to try to go to the church like everybody else. So I'm just going to go into the church. So she comes in the far back doors of the church, and she comes into the vestibule, and she tries to come into the church, but she can't. There's a lot of people coming into the church, and she was just trying to make her way into church. And every time she'd get right to the door, she couldn't go through the door. And she couldn't figure it out. Why can't she go into church? Well, she tried three or four times, and every time she couldn't get in. So she stayed out in the vestibule. Now in the vestibule, uh, there was an icon of the Mother of God there. And she just got tired of trying to get in the church and she sat down by the icon of the Mother of God. And the Mother of God came to her at that moment and told her that the reason why she wasn't allowed to go into church is because she needed to repent. She needed to change her mind and change her ways before she could be allowed to go into church. And Mary at that point was hit like a rock with her shame, how bad she had been. She wept, she cried. She realized at that point that that's the reason why she couldn't enter those doors because she had willfully been against God for the last like, you know, 15, 20 years of her life. So, at that point when the mother of God revealed herself to her, Mary vowed that she would change her ways. And she repented at that moment. That's the thing about repentance. It's something that ha can happen once in your life, but then it has to happen every moment. So in Mary's case, she made a decision to change her ways, right? We hear about this. There's many Christians out in the world and they get saved, they say, right? They, they change their ways. And it's a good start. It's the beginning start of the start of your salvation, right? Is to make a change in your mind. Then after that, you have to live it out, right? And this is what St. Mary's life is about. Why we look at her life. After this point, when she said she was going to change, do you think she went back and did what she did before? No. No. She, um, she knew she was going to look back at her, so she went back Yeah, they, she waited and she said, you know, I need to change my whole life. I can't, I'm, there's a reason why I can't go into church. So she was allowed to go in at that point. But then... The mother of God told her to go to this monastery by the Jordan. Go to the Jordan and you'll find what you need. So for the next 40 years, Mary went out into the desert. And she lived in the desert by herself. She was so ashamed. She had so much sin in her early life that she had to spend her time actively repenting. Yeah. Which meant that she couldn't be looking at the things of the world. Too many things in the world distracted her and pulled her down and pulled her away. She knew she had to leave that world. Many of us, we have to leave the worlds that we're in. If you're trapped in some kind of thing that's pulling you down, a sin like St. Mary, then you need to cut it off. You need to get rid of it. You need to leave where this is causing influence on your life. Get it out of your life because it will destroy you. But St. Mary... She didn't want to be destroyed, but she wanted to change. And so she went to the desert as the, mother, as the mother of God told her to. She lived for 40 years by herself with three loaves of bread and the rags that she had on her body, which eventually fell off. And she, as you see in the icon today, she's, it doesn't show her totally naked, but she looks really skinny and very uh, like she's been in the desert, right? Her skin was like almost completely dark tan black. And uh, she, she had lived there for so long that God uh, used this separation from the world to purify her life. And so the story tells us about this other 
a great saint named Saint Zosimus. And Saint Zosimus was a man who said, you know, I'm a pretty good guy. I've done a lot of good things. I've been really faithful to God my whole life. God, is there anybody that you can tell, show me, or teach me how to be better? And God said to Zosimus, yes, go to the Jordan Monastery and I'll show you somebody. So he went out of obedience to God. And when he got there, he was told to go out into the desert. And guess who he found in the desert? He found St. Mary. She was deep into the desert. He had to walk 20 days in. When he got into the desert, he finally was able to catch a glimpse of her. And they had this really funny interchange when they first met. She fell down before Zosimus, and Zosimus fell down before her. And neither of them would get up until the other would bless them. <laughs> and this, no, you bless me. No, you bless me. Back and forth, back and forth, until finally Mary blessed Zosimus. And then they began to dialogue and to talk. Zosimus realized that St. Mary was a saint because she had repented for so long that she had become godlike. She was able to walk on water. She was able to float up high without touching the ground. She had a connection to God that was beyond our comprehension. But this was because of her great repentance, brothers and sisters. She gave her heart and her mind to God. And she gave her whole body to God. Not just her mind. She gave everything to him. And when Zosimus saw this, Zosimus realized that even though he thought he was all that great, he realized he wasn't. And that St. Mary showed him what true repentance was really all about. And I wanted to read to you today our hymns. The hymns to St. Mary are in your bulletin. And you sang them, but look at them closer. The Troparian for St. Mary today says this. The image of God was truly preserved in you, O Mother. For thou didst take up the cross and follow Christ. And by doing so, you taught us to disregard the flesh, for it passes away. But to care instead for the soul, for it is immortal. Therefore thy spirit, O Holy Mother Mary, rejoices with the angels. So you see the repentance that occurs even here as we describe her, right? She taught us to disregard the flesh, for it passes away. And then the Katankian says, My Savior and Redeemer, having been a sinful woman, Thou becamest through repentance a bride of Christ, having attained angelic life. Thou didst defeat the demons with the weapon of the cross. Therefore, most glorious Mary, thou art a bride in the kingdom. You see, Mary is teaching us what it means to be a bride. Because in preparing ourselves for Holy Week and for Pascha, we have to think about it in terms of a marriage, right? Ron and Karen are getting ready to be wed, and they are preparing for their marriage. And there's a lot of preparations that have to go in, if you've ever been involved in a marriage before. I was involved in one last fall, a double wedding, which even takes double the preparation, right? So imagine the preparation for this wedding that is to come between us, all of us, and, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our bridegroom. Mary examples that. Our Holy Scripture today teaches us about this as this woman anointed Jesus' feet with holy oil, preparing him for his burial. But at the same time, she was repenting. She was changing her ways. This has to be the image that we have in our lives, and especially, brothers and sisters, in the next couple of weeks as we prepare for Holy Week. So let's make our preparations by changing our ways. Find ways in your life in which you are not pleasing to God and change them. Find ways in your life where you are distracted and not focused on prayer, not focused on the things of God and change those things. It might take putting things in your life to change those things. It might be mean telling someone else about it, right? Some of you have not been to confession in a long time. You should come to confession, confess your sins and open to God. 
again, as this is our call as we prepare for Holy Week. Because as we prepare for Holy Week, we also prepare for the coming of the Lord. We pray that his coming will be a Pascha. We pray that he will return and take us to be with him. But let us make our preparations. Let us make our repentance so that we're prepared and we're not cast out like the bride uh, maids who are not prepared for the wedding. Let us make our preparations. And let us follow Mary of Egypt and also Saint Zosimus as well, who sets the example of humbleness and repentance. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory be forever. forever.